Right now. Clay and Company. Got that C Money baby going. It's that numb. I just got done taking a class this week. I'm like three classes in. Shaw Academy, shout out to Shaw Academy. I'm getting my financial training and investment classes going. I'm going to get my degree. It ain't going to take too long. I've been messing with the stocks a little bit, so, you know. It's Picasso, baby, a.k.a. Bucky Barnes on Facebook. I just dropped a new EP. It's called The Pre. It's on Apple Music. It's on Spotify. It's on Tidal. It's on, it's, it's on Amazon. Like, just look it up. Picasso, baby, with two Ys, all one word. The preak. Got a few got a few bangers on there. Heavily produced by Gage Johnson and Mr. A Plus. Oh my God, shout out my producers, man. I'm gonna get into it though. So the topics that we got for today, Clay and Company, episode five. I'm gonna talk. I'm bringing sports back. I'm gonna talk about the sports because it's coming. Like you knew it was coming. The NBA is supposed to be coming back. The NFL's got some changes going on. I'm gonna talk about that. And then on the rapper scene, with the music in Dayton, Ohio, there's a new top twenty list. <laughs> We're gonna get into that. Uh, but on a somber note, more serious note. But I'm gonna keep it real though. The public protest is going on, and you got to pay attention because it's going on around you. Everybody's involved, whether you want to or not, whether you have an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody got a right to an opinion. You can say it. It's America. You already know this. But who's to say emotions going to fly after you do speak? You better be uh, ready to deal with the repercussions of what you say with your tongue. Because it is going down, what you say. So, I'm just here to give you the information. It's not totally up to date. There's still stuff I'm under developing, like, right now. Like, I'm looking at it right now. I'm not going to include it, though. Like, you'll see what's going on. But just for right now, like, three main states. There was a lot going on. Like, last night, Minnesota police station was set on fire Ohio like in Columbus Ohio they're going back and forth with the police standoff Uh, in Kentucky seven people were shot but they weren't protesting because of the murder of this man they were protesting because of the murder of Breonna Taylor EMT who was killed at her home and I have a reason to believe, I mean, the media's not saying this, but you can just guess. There haven't been any protests since then. Like, they assumed that they were protesting because of Floyd, but they weren't. They were protesting because of Brianna, because nothing has happened to the police. There were some detectives that came to her house, and the detectives were narcotics detectives, so... Two and two together. The report says that there were drugs in the home. No drugs were found. Brianna was killed. Her boyfriend is living. And I have a reason to believe, like I said earlier, that they acted out because earlier in the day, before the protests even started, the audio of the 911 call was released. The audio of Brianna's boyfriend calling the ambulance to come and pick up his girlfriend because she's been shot. I believe she was shot eight times. 26 years old. Um, Her boyfriend fired shots first, just so you know, leading to the entry. But he believed the police were intruders, so who wouldn't shoot if, you know, you got people in your yard and detectives? I mean, anyone... I mean, you don't have to assume detectives don't wear, like, uniforms. So, of course, probably is in street clothes. 
probably dark. Who knows? I don't really know. I wasn't there. That's just the information that I have right now. But I do know that no drugs were found. That's reported everywhere. So, uh, In Minnesota, the four officers involved were fired. And a third-degree murder charge recalled to the mayor against the officer. And he was taken into custody just as I was about to do this podcast. So more details going to emerge, so just look into that. My take on it, of course, everybody knows I'm black. I'm also Indian. But I'm not going to say what everyone else says. My take on it is that this is just a battle. Like, I was already thinking about, you know, the turns of events when the corona started. At the beginning of the year, like, I started hearing about it before it even came to America. And then, boom, it happened. It is what it is now. And it's grown. But all the while, even during that time, I was still thinking about, oh, you know, I wonder when, you know, something else is going to happen. Like, you know, hasn't been a shooting in a while. And a lot of people can hear that, and you can say that to certain people, and they will get upset. I don't say that to people just out of nowhere. I'm just saying that because it's, you know, it's a podcast. It's me and you. I'm trying to be real. So, turn of events, it's like a cycle. It goes in and out. Like, yeah, it might go away. It's probably still going on. It's not being reported. But you already know, like, the news, whatever the news is talking about, there's a flip side to that. There's something else going on. They're not talking about conspiracy theory or not, you know. Plus, there's, like, a lot of people that have a lot of money that are living in this country, and a lot of them aren't even, like, they're not for this country. They're just living here. You know, if you had, just think about it. If you had money, unlimited money, per se, you can do what you want. You can flood it anywhere. You can pay people to do things, and things can get done. All I'm saying is, Things will have to happen in order to break old ideas and bring new light to lifelessness that exists everywhere. And I'm not just reading that. That's just something I came up with. Just think about that. Some things will have to happen, whether it be positive or negative, in order to break old ideas and bring new light to lifelessness that exists everywhere around us. Because you know there's lifelessness everywhere. There's life, yes, there's love, there's positivity, but there's also the flip side of that. Yin and yang. You know what I mean? And then, you know, all that lifelessness that exists, it exists in different things. You know what I mean? Whether it be people, the police, criminal reform, whatever, all these topics and stuff like that. All these things that are wrong with the laws. The laws were created like so long ago and... They were set up for a different time. And the people that made the laws didn't know. They they never imagined what's going on today. Come on. They would have never. No, their children, nope. Nobody knew. That's like in the 1800s, the 1900s, and so on. Like, no. No. There's no way they could have predicted what was going to happen. So, therefore... You know, the bottom line, in my opinion, the laws need to be changed. I've said that to a lot of people, and they agree, too. Does anybody have a good idea about what they should be changed to? No. So, it's like, that's where the discussion ends, because, you know what I mean? Because people have different ideas, and there's like, you know... People, different people have different views, different cultures. There's so many different cultures living here. You, you, a lot of people they don't even know. Like you would think, oh, I'm living in America. You know, English is like, you know, the standard language. It's not. More people, more people know Spanish here than any other language. More than English. Look it up. Come on, man. Like, Spanish is, like, probably going to be, like, the number one language. Now, on the sports. I'm about to get back into this music. Hold on.
I'm about to get on the sports. I hope everybody been uh staying safe, staying out the way, getting to uh enjoy life. Enjoy life. That's just what I want to say. Like I know there's like so much going on right now. There's a time and a place for that. Yes, it's going on. But at the same time, you putting all your energy into that. What about the things that you have, like, already? Like, you know, your children and stuff like that. Are you paying attention? Children are in school. Like, this is the perfect time to, like, spend time with them. Like, I know a lot, a lot of times as parents we get that way where it's like, oh, man, like, I don't have time to do nothing. Like, But it's like now you've had the time. So, like, are you going to use it wisely or not? Trying to get into this J. Dot right. This that dark side. They got a new video out for it. I like it, man. It's different. Especially the video, man. It's got a story to it. But anyway, we on to this NBA. For those that's interested, the sports. So it's supposed to be coming back. Majority of the NBA's GMs, they want to restart the season by going straight to the playoffs. Players that got mixed reviews, like Dame Lillard, I saw him, he was on uh, Jalen and Jacoby, and he was saying basically, you know, he don't want to go back into, you know, playing basketball if it's going straight to the playoffs. And then, and I don't know if you follow the Trailblazers, I follow a couple of the teams, I, I mean, it's easy just to look some stuff up and check it out. I, I, I was into the NBA season. And I kind of get into other teams nowadays because my favorite team is the Knicks. As I said before, like me and Yego was talking about that in a couple episodes ago. And uh, the main thing about the Knicks is they're so up and down. I can't even, you know what I mean? Once you start following, you just get upset. And then, like, nothing happens. And you just sit there and wait. You know, I'm not a fair weather fan. I'm still loyal to the Knicks, but I am going to check other teams out because it's the NBA. Like, it's interesting. So, these are the three differences that they offered, the, like, you know, the GMs and stuff to see what they wanted to do with the season. Like, you know, one, resume the season with all 30 teams, followed by a play in tournament. Number two, straight to the playoffs, play in tournament, or like a World Cup style, like soccer group stage. And as I say, soccer is like the World Cup. I don't know if you ever seen like the World Cup. Like they have, they have like brackets and stuff like that. It's 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 a different, different breed of playoff style. And then three is just resume the season and start to the playoffs. Nobody really wanted to do that. One person, I mean, one organization voted on that. And then for the other two, the top one that was beat out that will probably. B, what they do is just resume the season with all 30 teams followed by a play-in tournament. But like I said, a lot of players, I don't think they're going to be heavily influenced, you know, because, I mean, yeah, you get to get into the playoffs, but, you know, I guess you just have to take that as a chip on your shoulder and just move on because I kind of like what Dame Lillard was saying because he was saying, you know, if they got into the playoffs, he wouldn't feel like it was true because, you know, they were like the worst team in the West. So, hey yo, you heard that hard rock? That spliffing six and six, Richard Dope, Donnie and C Ray. Hey, I'm going to get back on that sports, though. The NFL, shout out to Joe Burrow, man, the new Bengals QB, rookie, speaking out on the police brutality, speaking out on the situation 
addressing the situation, bringing light to it. That's what we need. We need more light to it. So a decision can be made as a nation. Shout out to Brian Flores, head coach of the Dolphins. He had said something about it too. Said that he had talked to all his players about, you know, being one, being a real team. He said they was already like that, but he was just saying, like, you know, he heightened it because, like, all the stuff that's going to be in the media, you know, with the racial racial sway of portrayals and, you know, everything that goes along with it. The trolls online. You done seen that, too. So, uh, Derek Carr, he has said something about it, too. Las Vegas Raiders QB shared concern. Said he just prayed for peace. Ain't nothing really too much going on in the NFL right now. Just, you know, they speaking out on that. They really they ain't starting no training camps, no OTAs, and nothing like that. So, it's going to be coming soon, though. So far, football still still a go, but you already know football really don't start until, like, August, September. All right. Hey. So, that dating list, man. Let me let me get to this and get that out, get that out the way cuz I know some people want to hear about that. But uh first things first though. They spelled Jada right wrong, man. I also that was the first thing I saw. They put G dot right or something like that. Shout out Jada though, man. Go check out that dark side video. I played that I played that er- earlier. Shout out Euphoria Music Productions. He also got a song with Jay Perk called Fo. It's off the Hustle Grind and Struggle Shine. It's a new CD that Jay Perk got. But on the list, though. You know what I'm saying? They have some notable, they have some quotables on there. A lot of people I'm not familiar with, feel me, I, a lot of people just assume I'm from Dayton, I'm from Xenia, Ohio, born and raised, of course I was born in Dayton, but I remember bringing that up when I was a kid, I used to say like, yeah, I was I was born in Miami Valley Hospital, Miami Valley Hospital, nigga, you feel me, I will say some shit like that, but uh, they quickly shoot me down and be like, well, well you living in Xenia, so you from Xenia. And I wasn't, like, not saying I'm from Xenia. I was just saying, like, you know, I'm from Xenia. But, like, I was born in Dayton. They ain't really care about that. Right now, I ain't really on that, like, territorial where I'm from type of thing. Because it's, like, I don't know. I just feel like a free spirit. Like, I could go anywhere ever since, you know, since I've been incarcerated, been on the DL, I ain't gonna go too much into it. A lot of people, a lot of people brag about that shit. I don't, I don't know why, man. That shit ain't nothing to brag about. But anyway, onto this dating list, the top twenty. They have some quotables on there. The quotables that I fuck with. You feel me? C Money Baby, Jive, of course, Jason DBKS, Ah Beats, Yellow Pain, Jay Lee. Coochie Bay. You know what I'm saying? That's that's some of the notable quotables. You, you see them all the time. You feel me? Me, personally, as an artist, I'm just speak as an artist right now. Get off my podcast shit. But just as an artist, like, I'm not even upset that I'm not on it. I would never... You feel me? My notion is... That I would never want to be on no list like that. Now I'm not taking shots at the other artists that can feel however they feel. Some of them already know how they feel. Like some of them, they don't even give a fuck. But to me, I'm going. I'm I'm trying to talk to the people that are sitting there, like you know, the artists. Oh, I wish I was on there. I wish like like get your mind off of that, bro. Don't even think about that. Who cares? You would never want to be on that because. You're further than that. You feel me? You you want to be on the list 
on a different list, not that one. Don't be concentrated on getting on a list anyway. Do you make your music and put out that content? Who some people I want to see on there? That's what I want to get to. That's what I'll be trying to ask people. I'll be trying to flip the question. They'll be like, they be like, oh man, who 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 you wish was probably on there? Like they should take who or they they really say who you who you think they should take off, but they say it like in a subliminal way, like like oh man, they ain't put such and such on there, da da da. Like you know, they'll say somebody that they fuck with that they wish was on there, and then they try to flip it and be like, well yeah, he better than such a, like you know what I'm saying. Then it then it's a different conversation. Then you talking about you comparing artists and shit now, but to me. This from my bottom of my heart, like there should the more artists the better. You feel me? Because then there's like a plethora, there's there's a difference, there's you can yeah, you can make like a consensus of, you know, all the artists in the city or whatever. But some people that I would have liked to see on there if I made the top ten or something like that. Like J Dot Easy, Steven Ernest, shout out to the Wolf, B Scar, Matchinette, Lil Kirk, Mantis, Chris Cobain. He got a new project out. Go check that out. Uh, Pool, Core C, Ray 937, and Burb Jones. King of the Birds. You feel me? There's a lot of people out there capping. And I'm not talking about like fake shit. I'm talking about capping on a track, like going off. Like you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even know. There's like all the artists that I mentioned, they each have a track. Like I could, I could get on some Diddy shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if this was New York or something, like, that's what I would do. Like, I don't, I don't know if you're familiar, like, they used to come out with a lot of mixtapes back in the 2000s, like, when, uh, like a little bit before 50 Cent blew up, like, 2002. This is a long time ago. But, but for me, it was crazy, because, like, it was almost every day, they was every week, every whatever, they was coming out with a new tape. Somebody was And it'd be this DJ over there And then this DJ And then like It's New York Like there's so many clubs There's so many DJs There's DJs releasing mixtapes That's underground That you ain't even hearing of And then there's The big elite DJs Releasing stuff every week Like to me It just feels like Artists was making more Back then Like music There was more content And like a lot of people Say now Like man there's a lot of content Like man they drop albums Like to me It ain't that It ain't that much content I feel like there was more content before than there was now maybe it's just because you know it was more content from the people that were mainstream but I think there should be more underground content and there is but like it seemed like it's at a standstill to me so get in that booth you got time show your fans want to hear from you but yo that's the show. I'm going to be back again here soon. Shout out to Shaw Academy. I'm getting my financial training and investment degree. Go cop my new EP, The Preak. It's on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon. Visit datingtopic.com. That's my blog site. If you got any music, I'm telling you, you got any music, I will play it on here. I need music right now. That's why I'm not playing them right now. That's why you just hear dead air. But yo, send me your music. Flood my inbox. I don't care if it's a link or if you just want to upload it and send it to me. It's dayton.topic at gmail.com. Dayton.topic at gmail.com. Just save it. Save it in your email. For later, like if you if like maybe you can't send a track right now. Like right now, just save it. Dayin.topic at gmail.com. Flood the inbox. I'ma put I'ma put your music on here. I'ma put it on datingtopic.com. Might do something else with it. We we about to launch a YouTube here soon. But it's like we carefully conducting everything here at Dating Topic. We got a website that's going. We got this podcast. We about to get more. You about to see. We got plans in motion. 